Hi. This is a little introductory video to using the Chidi 3D printer. This is the XSmart 3 printer. It is considered a, in a beginner's level printer for 3D printing. And as such, I have uh, found it very easy to use, but there are a couple of things that I found very difficult at first because I'd never had done any 3D printing. And I tried to follow the instructions, but the instructions were, well, they're designed for an international audience, so they're mostly pictures. And I just couldn't figure some things out as easily as they probably were for somebody that's used one of these before. And it so happens that my brother gave this to me for Christmas this year and he gave one to my mom and one to my sister. So he was super generous this year and much appreciated it. But um, when I was setting it up, did all the things that you're told to do in the quick start manual, taking the cable ties out, the screws, the pieces of cardboard and foam and all of that, and that was all fine. But then when I tried to load the filament I ran into trouble. And then my mom has told me this has frustrated her almost to tears. And I feel like, well, if both of us have run into the exact same thing, then there are probably a lot of other people having the same problem. So the filament, I'll bring my camera around here. The filament comes off of this spool. And this spool is just hanging on a, on a peg that uh, fits into the back of the printer and that spool just turns around as the printing is unwinding filament. Now the first thing that I'm going to point out, I have a piece of the filament here in my hand. I saw on somebody's YouTube channel and I'm darn if I remember which because I looked at a lot of them suggested before you try to load filament is snip it off at an angle. So I'm looking at hmm, a little bit more than 45 degrees, but I am trying to get just an angle on there and a nice clean end because when you get new filament, it's usually squared off, but when you've been using the filament, you get this that has a little wisp on the end and that's very hard to feed up the tube. Okay, now what I'm going to do is bring the camera around and we're going to feed this up into the tube. Now there's a name for that tube that I don't know off the top of my head. But it has to come all the way around to the print here. So the filament was moving a little bit when I pushed that button, but I don't have any new filament coming out here right yet. So I'm going to push this down arrow one more time. And I hear it run. Now you can see new filament running out of there. If you'd had a different color in there, then it would be giving me um, a little bit of that color and then it would change to the new color filament, whatever I've loaded. I previously had red in there, now I have added red. Okay, so now I have some filament that is ready to discard, then I have a fresh load in there. So I am ready to print. Now when you're ready to change filaments, then it's actually kind of the same process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this little picture right up here of the print head, heat my printer head up to 220 degrees and then I'm going to press the unload button and then it's going to tell me to pull up on the filament to prevent uh, the filament from uh, being stuck during the unload process. Well, what they mean by that is reach around here to the back 
Get a good firm grip on your filament. Be careful not to bend it. Just pull straight down with it. You're not pulling up actually, you're pulling down. And then confirm that. And then it's going to pull the filament away from you a little bit. And then it's going to start to let go until it pulls loose. And now my filament is loose and I can pull it out of the tube and prepare some fresh filament put in there. All right, so I'm going to change to a black filament now. And one of the things that I learned is that filament shouldn't be just left out in the atmosphere of your home, especially if you have a little bit of humidity. So I put it back in the bag with the desiccant bag that comes with it and, uh, and keep it put away in the box. Now what I'm going to do is snip off the end of my filament again and working on that angle okay so like I said it's somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees that part's not important and then I place my spool on that peg in the back where the filament is coming off the bottom of the spool Okay, I have fed some, fil some of the filament up inside the tube, pushing it toward the extruder, toward the print head. You can see it's starting to darken the length of the tube as it's going toward the extruder. And now I'm back at the print head where I was before. Now I'm already at 220 degrees. A lot of times if I press that little picture of the extruder, I get that uh heat it up by the time I get the filament in place ready to push up into the tube. It's that quick. Okay, so we unloaded the old one. Now I'm going to press this button. I feel the filament being pulled out of my fingers a little bit. Just keep it up firmly pushed up in there. And then I'm going to watch until I get black filament coming out. And you might have to push this button, I said two or three times. I see red coming out, now it's switched over to black. Just a little pile of filament, now it's done. So now I am ready for printing. Before we go into printing, I'm going to show you some things about using Thingiverse to look up projects that you can print and then we'll uh, uh, get a project started. Okay, so we have the filament loaded into our printer and now we're ready to go find a project to print. Now the little thumb drive, the USB drive that comes with the printer has three or four projects on there. But uh, I am going to find something. Specifically I'm looking for some things that my mom might be interested in looking for. So I am going to go to a website called Thingiverse. The thing -iverse. And when I go there, then we're going to look up sewing because that is one of her favorite hobbies. And when I look up sewing, we see a lot of different things that a person can download and print out that are already designed. Some of them are going to print right from the get-go. Some of them are going to take a little playing around. But uh, we're going to start out and we're going to find there was one that I was looking at earlier and there are several thousand projects on here probably, um, well, at least five pages worth. I would say uh, maybe a couple of hundred that if I was to scroll through all of these, let's see, fast forwarding, I have 122 pages of projects that come under the heading of sewing. So some of them are 
uh, not that closely related to the topic, but many of them are. And you can see a lot of gadgets on here, but I noticed earlier when I was browsing that there was one that was of particular interest here. I did have this one that I found particularly interesting also because I have had my difficulties sewing on buttons by hand and others may have had the same. Now when you hover over a project you can see some things about it. There are 68 people that uh, made this a favorite. There are 94 people who downloaded it, zero people who actually left a comment behind, which is, uh, I like to read their comments if they have made it, uh, especially if there are any difficulties. Sometimes you'll see some comments of things that they needed to do. And if you scroll down, you can find a little bit more that they, uh, the author has written about this and, and uh, it might have some information about if it needs a special filament. This does not. Um, he talks about what program he used to print it out. Okay, so once you have found the design that you're interested in, and uh, we'll start with this one as a, as a really simple one, but useful one, then it's as easy as click download all files. And you have to sit through an ad for a little bit. Now I found it best to have your files set up in the same file that you have your uh, printer stuff and I just have a special file for projects. Now this is going to download it in the name of the folder that uh, the Thingiverse defaults to. So this is button sewing aid and then it gives it a number and that number is the identifier Thingiverse uses. So simply click on save and then you can close this and then we are uh, already done downloading. So I'm going to go into the projects folder and I just save a copy right here on my desktop. And you can see that I have quite a few projects that I have already downloaded. And so we are looking for this folder here. Now this is a zipped folder. So you can't use it directly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click with my right mouse button and I'm going to go up and left click on extract all. And we'll just let it keep the same name. It's going to open a new folder in this same directory here. But now I have up here or down here, I have uh, the folder that is all unzipped. So this one that was zipped that I had downloaded now I can get rid of because you don't need things cluttering things up. All right, now I have all the files that I need right here. But these are not directly usable. What I'm going to do now on your USB drive, uh, all you have to do is copy the files. I made a folder called XSmart3 and then I copied all the uh, files off that USB drive. I copied everything uh, all to this folder and there's a program on there that they include with the USB drive called Cheaty Slicer. I keep wanting to say Kitty because the Q, I want to pronounce the Q, but all the YouTubers are saying Cheaty, so I'll try to do the same. So we get this program called Cheaty Slicer. When you open this program, you get uh, something that is specifically designed to work with our little printer here. So what I'm going to do is click on File, and then right down here, I'm going to Import and what I'm going to import is an STL file. You can also use control I to do the same thing. And when I do, it defaults to the last thing that I was working in, which was uh, some dinosaur puzzles that I was printing for my little granddaughters. Now, going up in the folder directory structure, I'm going to 
find the button sewing aid, and here it is, that goes back to alphabetical order once you are doing this. And so it's fairly easy to find. Double click on that, go into files, and then go to the button sewing aid STL. And then when you double click on that, you get your objects ready to be uh, worked on. Now, you can play around with these things. This allows you to move them around. If you want to print more than one, you just can click on them and, uh, and uh, move them around. If you want to put more things on here, when I am printing, I like to have several things printing all together uh, because printing takes a couple of hours. This is not a, um, a five minute job. This is, these might be half an hour. Uh, if you add something with a lot more dimension to it, uh, cups or some of the wood shop uh, items that I have been building, uh, toys, uh, anything that has uh, significant height and, and needs more build to it, then uh, it'll take anywhere from three to five hours. This printer is very fast, I've heard. Now, some other things you can do is you can make these smaller or larger, but if you make the size different, then it may not fit whatever you intended for it to do. You could make it way too big and and make a, a button sewing aid as big as your head or as uh, tiny as uh, a pinhead uh, by accident. But um, if you have need of something bigger or smaller, uh, you can play around with that. You can also rotate these to make them fit better. And so when you click on the rotate button, after you have these selected, then click on rotate. I can rotate them in the plane of the printer bed. When they turn red like that, it is because I am laying outside the ability of the printer to print. Outside the print bed. But sometimes you're trying to get these to fit in a certain area. Now if I that rotates them in the plane of the printer bed, I can also rotate them so that they are perpendicular to the printer bed and either of these two planes, the red plane here, will rotate them upwards so they're basically printing on top of each other. But you have to be real careful doing that because these are not designed to be printed vertically. They won't print properly. You'll get uh, spaghetti. And I've accidentally done it. Well, what happened was I downloaded a, a file for something that the designer had not set it up to be printed correctly on this type of printer. And I had to rotate it into place. But I didn't understand that till I made a mess of the problem. Had to reprint. But uh, most of these, if they're laying flat on your print bed, that's all you need to do. Now you can click and hold on your print bed and tilt and look and see how these are going to look. And it's kind of nice to see if they're sitting on the bed or if they're hovering above it or below it. When you've messed around with that rotation, you can do some weird things with it. So the orientation of the print bed here is just a visual for you. It does not change how it's going to print on the printer itself. These other things I have actually uh, used a little less, but it looks like this defaults to where you can move them so that they'll print on their face, and that's nice to have. Uh, you can cut an object out and then move it to a new place. You can uh, set it so that if you have an object that is going to print where it has a lot of overhang, this filament doesn't handle significant overhang so you need supports and there are some things you can do with that but that's getting way beyond the scope of this video uh, another thing you can do though is measure the size of your object if you're kind of wondering if it's going to uh, work with what you need and so when I am looking at uh, uh, the size of this object for instance and it looks like over here on the side I get the size of the object here in inches. I can move it off of inches and go to millimeters when I need to, but uh, with the x-axis is going sideways. The y-axis is going 
up and down on this plane and then the Z axis is coming straight out at us. So this particular object is uh, a little over one and a third inches wide, uh, just about 2.9 inches high going this way. Now that's both of them together. So uh, this is not measuring just one of those objects. And then it's, uh, but since they're both round, you can kind of figure they are probably both going to be button size objects about one and a third inches in uh, diameter. And then they're going to be 0.14 inches tall in this direction right here. So the height of them actually on the bed. Okay. So sometimes that's nice to know before you start printing something and, and thinking it's going to work just right for you and then find out it doesn't. All right. Now, after you have all this set up, then we need to save it because if it doesn't quite do what you wanted to do, it's nice to come back and, and mess with it again. So I'll just save it with the default name. And now it's changing it into a 3MF file instead of an STL. 3MF is just the type of program that works with the GD Slicer program. And now I can open that, uh, make adjustments, add to it. Uh, if I need to print more or fewer, I could choose to do that. Now, before I actually am going to be able to use this file, what I need to do is get my USB drive, and it's over in the printer. And I'm going to plug it into my USB port on my laptop here. And now I am ready to export this file. Now this is going to export as G code. G code is what the printer uses to actually print your file. Now I need to make sure this is going to my USB drive. So double click on the USB drive. We'll keep this same name. Click on save. And now that is exported. Now I'm going to shift back over to my cell phone video camera and we're going to uh, set this up for printing. Okay, now we're back to the printer. I am going to insert the little thumb drive over here in the side of the printer and the printer is on. You can hear its fans running. Tap on the screen to bring up the printer. And then regardless of where you are on the screen, there, uh, an icon right here is a picture of, to me it looks kind of like a, a camera, but I guess it could be a picture of a printer. Uh, your interpretation is as good as mine. So. Now we're going to look for our file, and even though I didn't tell it to go anywhere in particular on the USB drive, I found that it's always under this file, SDA1. So clicking on that, and then scrolling down, you see everything that I've been printing out here. There we go. The button sign A. Just click on this, and it brings up a picture of your project right here. Okay. It tells us right here this is going to take only eight minutes, so that's decent. And it tells us it's going to take 0.9 meters of filament and 2.8 grams. Now, a, a full-size spool is a kilogram. You got uh, 250 grams that came with your printer, and then uh, when you buy this, you usually buy it by the kilogram. And so 2.8 grams is a very small amount. This is going to use PLA, which is the, the common filament. There are some other types, but again, that's beyond the scope of this project. And we're going to leave bed leveling on. I'm assuming that you've already gone through the steps to level the bed and all that stuff. We're going to double check that our plate is on nice and solid and lined up. This is a magnetic plate. I line it up with the tabs that are in the back, push it against those tabs, and then let the magnet grab it. 
scrape off any old filament if I can. Now, the white stuff you see on here right now is actually just ordinary glue. You got a tube of glue. If you didn't see it, it's actually down on the bottom of the styrofoam that uh, was underneath your printer. But this is the, uh, the glue that came with it. I have bought some more glue because I was actually running low on that glue, but um, I haven't actually opened this up yet because I find that a good coating of this uh, glue stick glue uh, lasts for a lot of prints, but it definitely helps for certain types of printing, small objects and such like these that have a tendency to want to scoot around. So I coat it with glue, I just spread it sideways and then come back and forth in a crosshatch pattern and it's been holding up and I've had no more problems with uh, making spaghetti is what it actually ends up doing. Okay, so now we've got a picture of what we want. We keep the bed leveling on. Just click on this arrow. It tells you that you want to have the top of your uh, enclosure off. So I was printing earlier, so it's already off. But take it off, and then you can click, uh, have the door closed if you want or not. That's up to you. I, uh, I usually go ahead and leave the door closed, but it's um, something that seems to help the quality of the print by having better air coming into it for uh, the PLA filament. Now, this is going to go ahead and go through its process. We will uh, stop the video for a bit because it's a very slow bed leveling process. And I should have clicked on confirm here. Forgot to. Now, what we're going to see here is um, it raised the extruder temperature up to 220 if it wasn't already there. Now it's raising the bed temperature up to 60 degrees, and both those are in Celsius. And uh, having that 60 degrees bed temperature is uh, going to help uh, lock the filament down to the base when it extrudes that first layer onto there. So a combination of a good warm bed and a uh, uh, glue stick seems to be what's needed. Everything else from here is automatic. However, if you notice that you're having a problem or it's too big or too small or uh, it's making a mess or whatever, just click on this square here to stop it. If you want to pause it, I haven't played with this yet, but I believe that you could pause it and possibly even change the filaments. I am not sure how that works. That's kind of an advanced trick. Now, I leave the light on. I like to watch this every once in a while. It's a good idea to check on the progress um, every few minutes anyway, uh, at least until the first layer is done. And then uh, once the first couple of layers are done, then you're probably good to go till the finish of the project. Although sometimes weird things happen if you have anything complex, especially if it has a lot of overhang and such. But anyway, we're going to let this print. Uh, uh, bring it back up in uh, in a couple of minutes as we get down to the last layer or so. Okay, we are in the last two minutes of our printing. We can see that right up here on our screen. That finish up. And then we'll return when it's all done. Okay, our printing is just about finished. There is considerable vibration from this unit, so I have it mounted to a pretty sturdy little desk here. A solid desk, but it still rattles around, but it has not been bothering the quality of the print. So, I think that's fine. But you definitely wouldn't want to like set it on a flimsy old card table or something like that. That's where I keep my computer, as a matter of fact. But it's just a laptop, so no problem. Okay just finished and I'm going to confirm that it is finished and that's going to let the print head cool down. You see it's counting down right now. We'll give this a, a few seconds to cool down. The hot plate is warm. Definitely going to be warm. And then I'm going to go ahead and 
pop it up. You won't hurt it by doing that. And then I'm going to bring it over. And now they provide you with they provide you with a spatula that you can use to pry these things off. Um, that's a metal spatula and it will scratch the surface of this hot plate is what I've um, heard from the YouTubers that talk about that thing. So they recommend using a, uh, a plastic, um, basically it's a, called a plastic razor blade or a scraper. Um, you could use, a, I suppose, an ice scraper or something like you'd use on your windshield. What I'm just going to do and what I've read you, um, you can do is just flex this and I'm going to turn it over and just flex it a little bit. You hear it crackle as it's breaking those loose. You won't hurt this plate. We're not putting a lot of pressure on it. And then it's just enough. You can get your fingernails underneath and not do any damage at all to your hot plate. Then I'll slide the hot plate back into place and we're all done. So I could go ahead and turn off my printer because the fan sound is rather annoying. But we printed off a couple of little objects here that um, have plenty of detail. On the back you'll see a little of the glue residue and that residue cleans off with just plain water. Yeah, it doesn't require anything special. Okay, so here's the other one. Both of them seem to have printed out pretty nice. I'm not exactly sure how to use them. That's uh, a different video, I guess. Okay, so that wraps things up for this video. I hope it helps. The um, purpose was to really help my mom and possibly my sister uh, figure out how to use this cute little printer. Um, I know that other people are probably running into the same problems and when I searched for this on YouTube I found lots of YouTubers telling us how to unpack it, showing us how to uh, pull a file right off of that USB drive and print out a cute little boat. That's all they did. They didn't uh, show you uh, how to get the filament in. Um, a lot of this was uh, kind of designed by people that were, they were experts, they had already been using 3D printers, and they really couldn't see just how basic those of us who had never used one uh, needed their videos to be. Well, I hope I have um, met that need. All right, so let me know if I left anything out or if you have any other questions. Give me some comments and I'll be happy to reply or even make a, another video. I apologize now for the uh, lack of quality in my camera setup. I have never done a demo video before. All of my videos are about uh, playing games, video games, and I record those directly off my computer. Uh, first time I've actually had to uh, operate a camera at the same time, but um, if I do many more of these, I'll try to get better at that. All right, well, have a, a great afternoon.